Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and you know we look at a lot of PCs here on the channel, and one of the trends that I've been noticing over the last couple of months is that I'm seeing more and more PCs with built-in fingerprint readers. This is partly because Windows has its own security feature now that allows for fingerprint readers to verify the user and let them into their PC, and many websites now are supporting uh, fingerprint readers as well for additional layers of security. And if you've got an older PC or a really cheap PC like the one we've got here on the desk today, uh, there's now an option for you. It's from Kensington. This is called the Veramark, and it's just a tiny little USB dongle, as you can see here. It's got a little fingerprint reading area on the front, and then, of course, you just plug it into a USB port. And they've got a little case here, so you can put a lanyard around it and bring it around to different PCs. And it's fully Windows 10 compatible, so you just plug it in, and you can start using your fingerprint to authenticate yourself. So we're going to take a look at this and how it works here in just a second. But I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look now and see how it works. Now the price on this one is about $50, so it does cost a little more perhaps than some of the other fingerprint readers I have seen, but I do think if you're buying a multi-factor authentication device, you might want to go with a name brand, and uh, I think you'll probably get more accuracy out of this one than you might get from a generic device because you don't want a uh, misread allowing somebody into your equipment without your permission. It's also compatible with the FIDO U2F standard, so as uh, more sites and apps start supporting that standard for fingerprint authentication, uh, it will work with this device and I think uh, Facebook and Google through Google Chrome and a few other sites are now working with this device so you do have uh, some compatibility beyond just Windows with it. On Windows 10, the installation uh, was very simple. In fact, all you have to do is plug it into your USB port and Windows will install all the drivers for you automatically. Uh, one thing though is that after that driver installation is complete, it just dumps you back out to wherever you were when you plugged it in. Uh, so what you have to do is navigate to your system settings, go to account, and then go to sign-in options. And there you will see a new option for the fingerprint sensor. You go in and program your fingerprints into the the device you can have multiple fingerprints programmed and then you can get into your computer without having to use a password so let's get this one up and running here and what's nice is that you can plug in the fingerprint reader uh, even after the computer is booted up to get into it so I've got it on my lock screen here I can just hold my fingerprint down and it'll let me in I could then uh, take this out and bring it to a different PC and repeat the process you do have to set up the fingerprint though on every PC that you own because uh, it is storing that data on the computer itself and not on the dongle here so if you do lose the dongle, uh, you don't have to worry about your data going with it. It is just a reader and nothing more than that. Now, optionally, you can install a password manager to allow you to log into your favorite websites automatically. So what will happen is when you uh, get this software installed, it will put plugins on most popular browsers. And when you're uh, typing in your username and password, it'll ask if you want the password manager to remember it. So the next time you come back to that site, all you have to do is use your fingerprint to log in. It's OK, but I'm not that crazy about it for a couple of reasons. The first is that the installation process is not as simple as it was to install the hardware in the first place. It just gives you a big zip file you got to download you have to extract that zip file, run the installation software, and then go through the process of getting it set up. Not so hard for techies, but generally for consumers, I think they want a uh, more guided process than a zip file that they have to figure out what to do with when it arrives on their computer. So that was strike one there. Uh, strike two is that it doesn't always work so well with every website you log into. So here's a great example. This is Outlook.com. Uh, where I've got a uh, junk email account set up. Now you can see here it's got the sign in screen and it's telling me up here to touch to sign in, which I will do now by touching on the fingerprint reader. It's putting in my account and then it puts my password in and then it jumps me right back to the sign in screen here. It's just not working correctly with this particular website. And I would imagine many others will have the same problem because this is not using some FIDO authentication standard. It's basically taking uh, the username and password out of its database and scripting a process in which it's typing it into that form, hitting the next button and going to the next screen. And right now, uh, it's just not working properly for me here. And I would imagine this will uh, not be an isolated case. But my biggest gripe with the password manager is that it's not helping users develop better practices for their account security. Namely, a good password manager should be encouraging the user to keep a separate password on every website that they visit. It's a very difficult thing to remember all those different passwords, but a password manager does just that. It manages those for you. This doesn't seem to do that. There's no tool to generate a secure password, uh, nor is there any kind of prompt that comes up, at least in my testing, that will uh, encourage the user to 
uh, put in something unique while they're setting up a new account somewhere. I use a password manager called LastPass, and what it does is that when it detects that I'm setting up a new account somewhere, it'll actually prompt me to generate a secure password with it, just a big long string of gibberish that it manages, but there's a different string of gibberish for passwords on every site that I visit, so if one site gets compromised, nobody will be able to log into another site uh, with my username or email address, and it's been a very important tool for maintaining my personal security, and unfortunately, a device that has software that's supposed to make you more secure should be really enforcing that, and this really doesn't do that. So my advice would be use it as a fingerprint reader. We're going to be seeing more of this uh, U2F uh, stuff happening on the web. Google, Facebook, Dropbox, and a few other sites are using it already. You don't need that Kensington software for that. It's a function of Windows 10. If you are, though, on Windows 7 and 8.1, uh, you will have to install the Kensington software to be able to get all of this authentication working on your computer. So it is very seamless with Windows 10, not so much with uh, Windows 7 or 8. But overall, I'm quite pleased with it. It's very quick at logging in. It's also very good at uh, not doing false detections there, as you can see. So if I use my correct finger here, it logs in. Very quick to get yourself into your computer, even on something low end, and a very quick and easy way to add fingerprint authentication to your device. And of course, its compatibility with uh, all the U2F stuff, I think, will be important moving forward as well. So that is the Kensington Vera Mark, and this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Tangential Soup Podcast, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.